It says in Kisvi Arizal, and I know this Kisvi Arizal because it's brought in Tanya, that Ibn Nishamis is on Shmini Atzeres. The conception of souls is on Shmini Atzeres, and Leidas Nishamis is on Shvi Yishal Pesach. The Jewish souls are born on Shvi Yishal Pesach. It says in Kisvi Arizal, it's mentioned in, I believe, in Lahav and Machakosa, but Priyetz Chaim at the end of the Tanya. Now, what does this mean? Exactly what it means, I don't know, because there's different types of neshamas and there's different types of ibur. But basically it means as follows. We all understand biological gestation. That from the time a baby is conceived until the time a baby is born, it sits in a very protected environment, in the rechem, ha'em, in the mother's uh, stomach, and develops. The initial nine months of development of a child are the times of the maximum change. A child will never change throughout their lives as they will during the initial six months because they're literally forming. And consequently, it must be done in an incubator in a very, very safe environment where they don't have to contend with the realities of life and the world outside at all. And when the child has sufficient Protection, the child is born, and of course the development continues after the baby is born. Really, we continue to grow throughout our lives, certainly spiritually, um, but to some extent even also physically, biologically. So it says in Kabbalah, Neshama goes through a similar process. That means, an Neshama in Ganeidin is called Kayach Ruchni Echad Pashat. The Neshama Ganeidin is a point, is a pintele, is an akude. And that point of neshama is ain't tough. All the detail, all the potential detail, all the possible detail that the neshama would and could radiate is included in that point in a totally indivisible way. And when neshama is taken from Gan Eden in order to eventually make its way into a body just like the body develops biologically in Erechem, the neshama also develops biologically also in Erechem. There's a process there's a metaphysical idea, there's a mystical idea, there's a Kabbalistic idea where neshamas develop. And there's a place where neshamas are taken and placed for the ibur, for the period that the neshama needs in order to develop itself to be sufficiently prepared to go into the body. And again, the principle is the same. The neshama takes on what's called in Kabbalah levushim, garments. And these various garments allow for the neshama to have a relationship with a finite and divided body, that the neshama, of course, is reduced in its potency, and it's also divided up into yag minikeches v'chayes, instead of being one and singular, becomes 613 different energies, and 613 different life, and three, 613 different lights, which is how the neshama comes into the goof. So there's a concept called ibn neshamas. So every baby that's born has two parallel ibors. There's the gestation, there's the pregnancy of the biological material, the physical body, which is on average nine months, a little bit more, a little bit less, but nine months on average. And there's the parallel gestation of the neshama. As the neshama is conceived, in other words, it's taken from Gan Eden, and the process of the f- taking on a form initiates until the neshama is born, meaning to say the neshama is now prepared to go into the guf, to go into the body. And apparently all neshamas that are meant to be born in a particular year are conceived on Shemini Atzeres and they're born on Shvi Yishal Pesach. I don't know exactly how this works practically, but logically after a neshama is born, it's conceived on Shemini Atzeres, it's born on Shvi Yishal Pesach, and then over the course of the next months, it enters into the guf of a developing child. There's a Gemara that speaks about when the neshama enters into the body, Mishas Pekida, Mishas Yetzida, Mishas Leida, at the moment of conception, 40 days later when the beginning of the formation uh, takes hold, or at the moment of birth, and it's not necessarily three opinions, it's three stages in this immersion, of this, in this union between neshama and kuf, and we can assume that the neshama does not enter into a body until it's finished with its own ibur. So shmini is, is ibur neshamas. Every year shmini atzeres, the neshamas are conceived. Every neshama that the Ebishta intends on giving birth to during a subsequent year is conceived, this is a very big day, 
And of course, we learn in Chesidus that Atzer is from the word Klita, which means to absorb and to internalize and to become one with, which of course is very connected to the concept of conception and so on. And on Shvi Yishal Pesach, which of course is the time of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, and specifically Kriyas Yamsuf, the splitting of the sea and the exodus, the Neshama is born, and every event of birth is comparable to an exodus. An unborn baby is considered an exile, a born baby is considered free. That's why you have Chevle Leida, the birth pangs, which are compared to, of course, the Chevle Mashiach, the birth pangs of Mashiach, as is discussed in the Mamari Hasidus at length, and so on and so forth. Try. This is the Kabbalistic idea. So there's a vart that the Rebbe, it's printed in a sefer called Hamelach Bemisibe. There's now another version of this sefer, which I don't have. I have the older version. Hamalach Ben Sibe are conversations that the Rebbe had for the first 20 years or 21 years of his Nesias while sitting upstairs by the table by the Tish of the previous Rebbe. When the previous Rebbe passed away, when the previous Rebbe was nostalgic, so as long as the Alter Rebbe's and as long as the Rebbe's mother-in-law lived, she invited him and he went on Rosh Hashanah, on Motzi Yom Kippur, I don't think Erev Yom Kippur, but on Motzi Yom Kippur, on Sukkot, and Pesach, and on Shavuos. And all the meals of Yom Tov were eaten together by Mtish, by Mfriyadik and Rebbe. And there was always a minion around the table. There was always a minion around the table. And um, the Rebbe and hosted. And of course, we know the Rebbe didn't sit at the head of the table. The Rebbe sat on the left. The Rashag said on the right, and the seat of the previous Rebbe, which was the head of the table, was left vacant, was left empty. And there were chsidim who wouldn't go in upstairs. The Rebbe meant Levracha, would not go into the Sudas upstairs. And the argument was, he doesn't want to be any place where the Rebbe is not sitting, but Eisha Shulchan, where the Rebbe is not sitting at the head of the table. So the Rebbe used to sit on the, on the left of the previous Rebbe's seat, as he did, Bechayim, Chayoseh, Baal Mahadein, during the previous Rebbe's left. The Rashag said on the right, and the seat of the previous Rebbe, which was the head of the table, was left vacant, was left empty. And there were chsidim who wouldn't go in upstairs. The Rebbe meant Levracha, would not go into the Sudas upstairs. And the argument was, he doesn't want to be any place where the Rebbe is not sitting, but Eisha Shulchan, where the Rebbe is not sitting at the head of the table. So the Rebbe used to sit on the, on the left of the previous Rebbe's seat, as he did, Bechayim, Chayoseh, Baal Mahadein, during the previous Rebbe's physical lifetime. Physical lifetime. And he would sit, he would sit with great hachna. He sat at the table as if the previous Rebbe was actually physically present. They say they were very frequent to look over at the empty chair. And there was a certain aim, Bechlal, the Rebbe is a serious person. And when he sat by the table of the Fiyadik Rebbe, there was a certain additional earnestness about him. He almost never initiated any conversations. He really didn't start Nagunim that much. Other people would start Nagunim on occasion. But he would answer questions. People would ask and the Rebbe would answer. And uh, we have some material of those 20 years of conversations, but from what I'm able to surmise, most of it is lost. In other words, you can see how much they have from Tafshin Lamed and Lamed Aleph. When they actually began to take serious Hanochas, you see how much went on at the tables and you realize how much must have been lost in the years until Haftes Lamed Lamed Aleph when they have very, very, very concise, very, very limited transcripts of the events. So there was an occasion, I think it was a Shuras, but I could be wrong, where someone said to the Rebbe that it says in the Sikhs of the previous Rebbe that the most joyous day of the year is Shvi Yishal Pesach. The greatest Simcha by the Rebbe was Shvi Yishal Pesach. So he says to the Rebbe, I'm free to the Rebbe, you didn't see it. You didn't see by the previous Rebbe an extraordinary joy in Shvi Yishal Pesach. So the Rebbe answers him in Ayobe. The Rebbe says to him, You were there, you saw it yourself. So he says to the Rebbe, That's exactly why I'm asking, because I was there and I didn't see it. So I'm curious how we understand it. So the Rebbe answered him, Tell me, it says in Kabbalah that on Shabbos is Elias Elmas. On Shabbos, all the worlds have an ascent. Do you experience Elias Elmas on Shabbos? So he says, No. He says, so because you don't experience Elias Elmas on Shabbos, that means Elias Elmas isn't happening, or it's not happening to you. It's not happening to you. So just like you don't experience Elias Elmas, you didn't experience the Simcha of the Rebbe on Shvi Yishol Pesach. But in reality, the greatest Simcha of the year was the Simcha of Shvi Yishol Pesach. This is what the Rebbe said in response. In other words, he 
he acknowledged that something happened to Yishal Pesach, which even though you don't see it, makes it very, very, very special. Here is a Maimit, there's actually two of them. This is the first of them that basically compares Shvi Yishal Pesach to Yom Kippur, Mamish. It compares Shvi Yishal Pesach to Yom Kippur in the sense that there's no eating and drinking. This is, so to speak, the argument. Just like in Yom Kippur, there's no eating and drinking, not because you're fasting, but because you're higher than eating and drinking. Shvi Yishal Pesach is above the holiday of eating and drinking. It's a very, very interesting moment. And of course, we're learning this as a preparation for Chag Pesach, which is coming up pretty soon. And uh, in this Maimir, Shvi Yishal Pesach is pe- placed on an incredible pedestal. It's very, very unique. Above all the other Yom above Shmini Atzeres, and above the one day of Shvuas, that somehow, Shvi Yishal Pesach is an extraordinarily holy day. At Kedei Kach, that you say that Shvi Yishal Pesach, it, it, it's above eating, like the even Yom Kippur. So I'm tying these two things together. I don't know if they're tied together, but I'm tying them together. There was this great simcha by the Rabbeim, the greatest simcha of the year. In Kabbalah it says it's the time of Leidas Neshamis, the Neshamis are born, or the Neshamis go out of a constraint, they go out of a limitation, they go out of an exile. And this idea that Shri Yishal Pesach is such an incredible day, that it's above the idea of being motivated by food and drink, as you'll see in Mitzvah Shem in the Maimed. So let's start. Let's not waste any time. I gave you, so to speak, an introduction. Let's begin the Maimir. And the Rebbe says, The Apostle says, Six days you should eat matzahs. Over yeim, on the seventh day, I said, the Shem on the seventh day is a day for hesitation, for pause, for stutter stepping. La Shem And the Apostle finishes, Don't do any work. And of course, we all know that there's a big kashif and sheishes yamim and shivas yamim, and we learn from this davar alav and yoni that ma shvi reshos, av sheishes yamim reshos, and so on. But this pasuk says six days you have pesach, and you eat matzahs. The seventh day, which is called atzeres, a day of hesitation, of pause, for the eibush to himself, lay tasa malacha, no work is done. So there's a gaval like a kashif. What's the kashif? We must understand that Bishmini Atzeres Ksiv Atzeres Tielachem. By Shmini Atzeres, it also says Atzeres. The Kan Ksiv in Pesach it's written Atzeres Lavaya Lekach. And by the way, Shvuas, it says in Chazal that Shvuas is called Atzeres. You'll see in the next Maime that all three Yamam Tevim are called Atzeres. Shvuas from the Chazal and Shmini Atzeres and Shvi Yishal Pesach from the Psukim, but they're different. Because by Shmini, by sh, by sh, Shmini Atzeres, it's an Atzeres Tielochem, it's an Atzeres for you. And by Shvi Yishal Pesach, it's an Atzeres Lashem Adakacha for the Ebsht. Vegam, and here's the Moed in the Kediyuk, the next one. Ma'u inyan leitasem alacha. Why does it say about Shvi Yishal Pesach, don't do any work? Yom Tif Yolada do work. It should say, Kom Malachas Avaidah. Da'ava lelemei me Malachas Avaidah. Work associated with Parnasa, that you're not allowed to do. Everybody knows you a lot of work to feed yourself. And this is a very deceptive pasuk. Shabbos it says, Yom Tov it says, Here we're talking about Yom Tov it says, How come it says about Pesach, Pesach, no work, implying that it's like Shabbos. So the Rebbe continues on line 7 and he says, The Gemara says, <coughs> and this, of course, is very famous. There's a plukta that tanoi bin yomtiv. When it comes to yomtiv, there's an argument amongst the Chazal. Whether yomtiv is a day to be involved with the Ebishter or yomtiv is a day to be involved with yourself. The Abelaz says, Svira Lei, the Abelaz says, opinion is, A, kul lavaya, kul lacham, you have a choice. You can dedicate the whole day to the Ebishter to learn it to daven. Or you can dedicate the whole day to eating meat and drinking wine and feasting and celebrating its yomtiv. But Rabbi Shu is Svidalei, Rabbi Shu is of the opinion that Chetzev Lavaya and Chetzev Lachem. Half of it is for the Abish and half of it is for you, and that's Taket Halacha, the first half of the day you're in Shul, and the second half of the day you eat and drink and be merry. And then the Rabbi said, Shnei Mikra Echodosh, both of these opinions. Whether it's either all Lashem or all Lashem or half half is based on the same Psukim. There's a Pasuk which is written by Shvi Shal Pesach, a to the Ebishter. 
So we compare the two atzeres. We join the two atzeres together. We say that each atzeres learns on the other atzeres. So by Pesach you have lachem and lachem and lachem. And by Shvi Yishal Pesach you also have lachem and avaya lachem. Rabbi Lazar Savar Ei Kulei V'chulei You choose either Kulei Lachem or Kulei Lachem. And Rabbi Yishua Savar Echalkei Divide it in half. Chetz of Lachem and Chetz of Lachem. Now of course... The obvious interjection is that the kula alma lay pligi that bateres the beinu nami lachem. When it comes to shvuas, even Abu Yezer Hagol, the Bazar Gadol holds, you have to have nami lachem. You have to have uh, shvuas. You have to have a noah because shvuas the Abish that gave us the Torah, and it's an incredible day of simcha. And the simcha has to express itself in gashmias and eating meat and drinking wine. So the gabi shvuas, Abu Yezer agrees that Abu Yeshua they have to have nami lachem. And Pesach, they argue. So now the Rebbe says, what is certainly true is that even though we make a hekesh or a shava this atzeres to this atzeres, to say that both on Shvi Yishal Pesach and on Shmini atzeres, you have two expressions, Lashem Alekecha and Lochem. The fact is, where does it say Lashem Alekecha and where does it say Lochem? Medeksiv, Gabi Shvi Yishal Pesach, Lavai Alekecha, by Shvi Yishal Pesach, it says today, Ebishter. And by Sh- by Shmini Atzeres it says Lachem, Meklal the Yesh Bei Shaychas Yisse that it makes more sense that there's a greater disposition, there's a greater leaning. On Shvi Shal Pesach Li Eskul the Lavaya that should be entirely for the Eibushter. Maybe Shmini Atzeres then isn't Shmini Atzeres the Ksiv Lachem which is Lachem. In other words, in Halacha, Blazer says it's either or. Nabi Shua says split. But the Pnimis Hanyanim look at the Psukim literally. And we look at the Psukim literally. Shvi shall Pesach is Lashem and the entirely, and Shmini Yatzeres is Lachem. So although the Chachomim and Tedesh and Baal joined the two Yatzeres together, but it's still not taking away from this idea that by Shvi shall Pesach it says Lashem and the And Dalt Rebbe is going to go on this idea, this aspect, that uh, before you make the Hekish, I suppose, Shvi shall Pesach. Is the date on which it says atzeres? It's day for hesitating, for pausing, and it's lashem alekach. So even though halachically it's either Rabbi Lezer ben Horkinus or Rabbi Shua ben Chananya, but in Pnei Besanyan there's something very special about Shvi Shal Pesach. There's lashem alekach. So the Rebbe says ubazer. Therefore, even though Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi compare the two atzeres, but when you look at the pasuk literally, Shvi Shal Pesach is lashem alekach. This is also the pshat, yuvin, gamkin, mashakos of bay, leitasem aloch. That's why it says taka in the pasuk that you shouldn't do any work at Shvi Yishol Pesach. The kiv on the boy is a kol lavayim. The loch, of course, is, at least according to Rabbi Yezer, that you can spend the whole day doing what Abishta wants. And if you spend the entire day doing what Abishta wants, you don't even eat. You just learn and daven, imkain accordingly. Osur basias melechas eichel nefesh. You would not even be allowed to do work associated with food. Why not? Because the pasuk among and around the among and around paskins. Shem misana tanes cholim be yomtiv. If you fast on yomtiv, a fast because you had a bad dream, so you're not eating. So also basias melacha. So you're not allowed to do work for somebody else. For you, that yomtiv becomes like Shabbos because you're not going to have enough from that food. A feel no melechas eichel nefesh. So the Rebbe says there's a concept that it's yomtiv and you're not allowed to do work. What is that concept? If you're fasting. Shvi shal Pesach, that says Hashem Alekecha, is al derech zeh, for who hadin im eise kula lavai, if Shvi shal Pesach comes and you choose to dedicate the entire day to the Ebishter, asur basiyas melacha legamri. It's prohibited to do any kind of a work. So this is the opening nekude of this maimer. That he studies the psukim, and if you will, he's even more basic than Tere Shabal Peh, just from Tere Shabal Ksav alone. And says, there's something about Shvi Yishol Pesach. If you look in the Chumash, Shvi Yishol Pesach is Lashem, it's all for the Eibishter. Shvi Yishol says, for you. Shvi Yishol Pesach is for the Eibishter, which explains why the Pasuk says, Kol Malacha, any kind of work you're not allowed to do, because this date has to do with Lashem Alekecha, to the Eibishter, completely, and no Shaykh is with anything else. So put that on the low shelf, and we will be revisiting this idea soon. But let's move on. Vihine. Having identified Shvi Shal Pesach as being extraordinary, there is Hashem Alekech, and there is even a suggestion that you're fasting at Shvi Shal Pesach, 
And therefore, kol malacha leisasu, or leisasa malacha, any kind of malacha, not even echel nefesh. Let's move on to another topic, and the next topic is simcha. As we learn about simcha, what the Rebbe is going to explain to us is that there's different kinds of simcha, and usually simcha is associated with eating and drinking. The argument the Rebbe is going to propose is that the simcha of Shvi Yishal Pesach is higher than food and higher than drink. It's an atzmi as deke simcha, which ties into the leisasa malach. Now simcha deserves our attention. And to be sure, more than simcha deserves our attention, simcha is something we need to do. So the Rebbe brings in so many maimodim and in so many sikhs that the Rambam discusses simcha besav hilcha sukkah v'luluf. In the end of the laws of sukkah and luluf, the end of chapter 8, I believe, the Rambam discusses simcha. And he says, amongst other things, that simcha is called avoid the It's a great service. Now the meaning of the words avoid the means A, it's very important. And B, if you don't mind me being honest, it's challenging. To be besimcha is a great job. And he says, a yid has to have simcha shal mitzvah. Whenever he does a mitzvah, he needs to have joy. And he brings the story about David HaMelech, who was already a melech. And it says, mefazes, or mecharke, bechol eid, he was throwing himself, he was somersaulting and cartwheeling behind the other, embarrassing himself in the presence of the Eibishter. And he was dressed like a common mishodas, eifid bod. And when he came home, his wife, Michal Bas Shol, who was a princess, she was the daughter of royalty, said to David HaMelech in disgust, this is what happened, you make a shepherd into a king, he disgraces the throne, you're acting like a commoner, and David HaMelech answered her, I wish I could have shamed myself more for the cover that kill. And the Ramah goes into a big shturm about Simcha, he brings the pshat, and tachas, that even if you do everything the Yebishter wants, but you do it without Simcha, that alone justifies v'avadat So Simcha is huge. But simcha needs a motivation. So the Rebbe says, first of all, every day it's impossible to have simcha, even though we should. Second of all, in order to have simcha on Yom Tev, you have to eat meat and drink wine. And third of all, on Shvi Yishal Pesach, you have simcha without eating meat and without drinking wine. Kefi is by Lakaman, as you'll see as the Maimon progresses. So here we go, line 17, Vihine. Ikera simcha, the primary idea of simcha. The greatest joy is joy in HaKadosh Baruch Because it's the only thing really being worthwhile being joyous about. And I suppose if I had to explain psychologically the relationship between joy and God, it's very simple. Yisrael B'tach B'Hashem. The Ebesh is, is our anchor. The Ebesh is our rock. The Ebesh is our trust foundation. And uh, in the Ebesh they were secure, and therefore in the Ebesh the security were joyous. Like it says in the Sid, there kemayim eva yismechu v'cho Yisrael. That the joy of the Jewish people is bacha is in the Abishhtad. Without the Abishhtad, it's impossible to have Simcha. And with the Abishhtad, it's if it's true that you have the Abishhtad, it's impossible not to have Simcha. So the Rebbe says on line 18, to be sure, a person should really have joy all the time. It's simply difficult. nevertheless, the Yom Tevim call the seasons the time of Simcha. Because Sha'az has simcha shall mitzvah, because then there's more mitzvahs. And there's more joy of mitzvahs. He be yes, it's the ace of yesterday's. It's more powerful and more intense than it is normally. Vatam, why is it true that all year long, though theoretically you should have joy, practically you don't have joy? And on Yom Tev you do, Chine, Aidei, Yam mitzvahs, anytime a person does any mitzvah. Huam Shalch has taste for Seir Chodesh Batzilos, you bring down additional light into the vessels of Batzilos. And most importantly, you're revealing this additional joy, light, in the vessels of Atzilus and expanding Atzilus and so forth. Says the Rebbe Vinyanefesh Elikis. And the Yum and Neshama, Nimshecham Epnim Besakelem, also comes from the vessels of Atzilus. And therefore, the argument is when you do a mitzvah and you reveal additional lights in Atzilus, and also in the vessels of Atzilus, it should reach the Neshama and motivate it. The fact remains that Ein Mizgalaba, although the Neshama comes from Kalim of Atzilus. And when you're doing a mitzvah, you're increasing and adding light to the vessels of Atzilus, the Neshama doesn't experience this. Ein Mizgalaba, Ha'ir Hanim Shechaydi Mitzvah. The Neshama is not privy, it's not Zaychet to experience. The godliness which is revealed to the mitzvah, even though it's revealed to the kalim as well, in a revealed way, to be revealed inside of itself, in a way that the light is revealed. 
Twice in Tanya, the Altarebbe asks this question. Twice. Chapter 4 and chapter 35. But he gives very different answers because he's really asking different questions. The question is, why does a Jew need Judaism? Why does a Yid need Tehidim? A Yid's a chelik al-kam imal mamish. You by yourself are closer to Hashem than anything. What do you need a mitzvah for? So in chapter 4 the answer is because your godliness is hidden. The godliness of your neshama is hidden completely. In chapter 35, in Pedic Lamatei, it's much edelit. He says, your neshama may be revealed. And you may have yira and ava baraba and ava batanu again, but it's yesh misha oyev. You don't have the maximum bittel to the yebishter. And because you don't have the maximum bittel to the yebishter, you don't have the maximum gili of the yebishter. If you want the maximum gili of the yebishter, it's not enough. To use your neshama to love and fear Hashem, you have to do a mitzvah with a bittel and a kabbalah sale, and that connects you to atzmas. Va'af, moreover, she'sheirish nefesh lekisim ipnimiyas akelim comes to the innermost vessels. The neshama does. The bia shabehen nim shachagili mamish that in the vessels of bria tzina see the revelation does manifest be pnimiyas in a revealed way. In other words, the kelim of bria receive a lakus. From the Kalim of Atzilus, like it says in Kabbalah's Svan, Rotten Chesidus, that the Kalim, Gamba, Siyem, Kedusha, Gemurah, the Kalim are the center of each world, the base of of each world, which are Bechom Mokam Alakus, says that Bechom Mokam, nevertheless, even though the Neshama comes from Kalim of Atzilus, and the Neshama also comes from Kalim of Bia, Bin Nefesh Alakis, and the human soul, Ain, May, Yed, Klau, Bebechinus Nimis. The light of the mitzvah and the joy that that light elicits is concealed, is hidden from the neshama, like the Bechinus Makif, it's available to the neshama in an indirect way, in a way of halim, in a way of concealment, and it's not revealed. Why not? The neshama is a chilek alakami mal mamish. So the Rebbe says in line 26, finally we show the reason that Shad Nefesh Abaham is because the animal soul, mechas, so master, blocks and covers. Covers and blocks. And embraces and encompasses. As I never shall kiss the godly soul, built he tastes mock, and he doesn't allow for the space. The carnage bar that should enter into the neshama, into the godly soul, the light. We never shall kiss in the godly soul, but begin to be in a revealed way. So the godliness is not able to reveal itself on the person because you cannot overcome the nefesh of Bahamas's nisayin. That's the meaning of the Pasuk, the behold is behind the wall, meaning the Ebishter is here, godliness is here, we cannot access it. Why can't we access it? Because Nefesh Hamas doesn't let. So all year long, there's also a Lakus through Mitzvah. And all year long, when a person would experience the Gilkus of a Mitzvah, it would give him Simcha. But most people, most of the time, are not able to experience it. Now if you understand the Kabbalah Sheba David, the Kabbalah is in Chutzlot, Neshamas are in Asiyah. In Eretz Yisrael, Neshamas are in Yitzirah. And a yom tif, the neshama go up to bria. So the neshama is going higher. If the neshama is going higher, there's less concealment and more access to godliness. Therefore, on yom tif, there's a greater possibility for simcha than there is all year long, like he's explaining now. Line 20, yom tif, when yom tif comes, he tastes Gilead, there's additional light. Extra light. And like I said a moment before, because it comes from Elam Abriya. Vaydezeh, mitzach tzeach kliya, nevesha baham is gamke, the additional light which reveals itself on Yom, to scrubs and cleanses the vessels of the animal soul as well. And he teaches, V'zehu mashgiach menachalenes. Achar kosleinu is a helem. Mashgiach menachalenes, looking through the windows and the crevices, is a gili v'chol. V'lachain, and accordingly, Oz, when Yom Tif comes, even though any time you do any mitzvah, you're bringing God in a sent atzilas, and you're accomplishing all kinds of wonderful things which should bring around simcha shal mitzvah, but it doesn't happen. When it comes Yom Tif, Hey May, Adim L'Simcha, there are seasons of joy. Shasimcha, Bebechinas Gili, Bechula, the joy is altogether revealed. And the Rebbe says in line 32, V'lachei, Nekri V'shal Me Simcha, that's why they brought a carbon that was connected to joy. She said, O Pula, the Nefesh Abaham is Gamke, they brought this carbon to feed and to say and to bring joy to the animal soul. When it comes Yom Tif, you have to make everybody happy, your wife, your children, and your animal. Your animal soul. Hamasted, Esom HaLem, is that normally, Covers and hides. Al bechinas nita zalakisha benefesh adam of the spark of godliness, which is in the spirit of the human being. And as a consequence, all year long, o meina simcha savaye, it prevents the person from having the kind of joy of Hashem, which we're describing in this moment. Says the Rebbe, when Yom Tov comes, I dekrov as heimin in vadam. You offer up on the mizbeach these particular organs that go on the mizbeach, plus the blood. Al gabi on the mizbeach on the mizbeach. So nechlelaz ve'ela nefesh ha'behemah le'eshal ma'ila, the fire of the human being, 
in his connection to HaKadosh Baruch joins with the fire that comes from above and you have joy. That the animal goes back to its source, the face of the ox in the supernal chariot. And as a consequence, there is simcha. All year long, there should be simcha, but the Yitzhahara doesn't let it through. Yom Tif, the Yitzhahara tries to stop it, but in Yom Tif, the simcha breaks through, and that's why there's a mitzvah of Samach Tov B'chagach. V'lachain concludes the Rebbe, Ayyadeh, Yachil, Zbisar HaShlomo, we eat in the meat of the animal, which is a carb. Ho, Yor, Yechil, Nesmeyach, Bavaya, and Yom Tif, it brought them joy. Ki Abosah, Nasa, Bechin, Esmeh, Mutzah, the flesh, the meat, becomes an intermediate to bring joy to the person. Kedua, this is based on the Kabbalistic idea of that that a person gets life and energy from where? From food. And the food is a lower level than him, mineral, plant, animal. He's on the level of Medaber, he gets life from the levels of Demet Semechai, mineral, plant, animal. And how does the mineral, the plant, and the animal facilitate the joy? The answer is, Shemakeda made now the source is very high from the level of Adam. Like it says in Pasuk Seif, Besaid Achor Vekedem Tzatoni, man was created last, he was created first. The thought of man was created first. Similarly, all other creations, they may have come after man in their machshav and the Abish's thought, but in reality they emerge first of a higher source. And therefore human beings eat animals, plants, and minerals, not just to get the physical nourishment out of it, but the spiritual connection to something which is higher themselves, the neshamas on the higher, the, 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 the neshamas of the animals, the plants, and the minerals, which have a higher source than the human neshama, which feeds the human neshama and gives him joy. In short, they come from Tehu. Through the breaking of the vessels, they fell very low. to be mineral, plant, animal. By by sacrificing, by bringing close the organs and the blood. which were unified and ascended their source. the meat becomes a vehicle. have joy with the so he suggests specifically that the simcha of Yom Tev is the simcha of a carbon. Although nowadays, obviously, no carbon, so it's simcha of a bus, they eat meat and they enjoy themselves. Says the Rebbe on line 51, That's the Pshat Simcha and Yom Tev. All year long you should have Simcha Shal Mitzvah, but it's difficult. On Yom Tev it's a higher revelation, you can have Simcha Shal Mitzvah and you must. And the time of the Rebbe Samikdash was the meat of the carbon itself. Nowadays, of course, it's the Vesamach, the Bechagechas, the meat and the wine and so forth and so on, which is arranged for a person to have Simchas Yom Tev. Where's the Rebbe going with this? Where's the Rebbe headed? Where are we headed with this? We're headed to the idea that there's a Simcha that's higher than food. And that Simcha, which is higher than food, is Taka the Infant Shvi Yishol We're on line 52. We learned that although simcha should be always, simcha shal mitzvah particularly should be always, the reality is that it takes yom tif to bring the simcha forward, because on yom tif there's a greater light, so it breaks through the blockage that the animal soul superimposes on the joy which would exist otherwise. And what motivates the joy is the carbon, the meat. So the Rebbe now continues on line 52 and he says, When Mashiach comes in Elam Habo, occurs, there's going to be no eating and no drinking. Now, everybody knows the opinion of the Rambam that coil Elam and Shomas. That Elam Habo, which is the Taklas Ha'achrin, the final reward, which is the Chayim Nitzchim, the eternal life of a person, according to the Rambam, happens after the Neshama leaves the Guf. In fact, the reason the Rambam says so is since there's going to be no eating and drinking, there's no need for a body. But Ramban, and the Ramban objects. In fact, he objects from this Gemara itself. She'im Kidvar of Kainhu, that if the Rambam is right, that in Elam Abba you have no goof and therefore there's no eating. What is the Gemara teaching us? 
וכי שייך לנפש בלי גוף, אכי לכולו. Would there be even a basis to suppose eating if you have no body? So the very fact that the Gemara has to say there's no eating is proof that there could be eating, and nevertheless you're not going to eat. And Masik, Ela Masik, the Ramban, therefore says, Shekoy al-Zman, Tchiyas ha-Meisem, Shegi ha-Adam ba-Guf. The famous Ramban that disagrees with the Ramban that we're going to be in a body and that's going to be the eternal state. Fa'afa pikein, Ember le'achil, you're still not going to eat v'chulu and so forth and so on. And if the question becomes, if you have a goof, why don't you eat? So the Rebbe goes into the discussion on eating. And basically he says that food is a motivator of joy. Or I should say it in two steps. Food is a motivator of life and life is a motivator of joy. And in the Nimsha, of course, mitzvahs are a motivator of alakus, and the alakus is a motivator of simcha. The explanation is, What do we know? This is the mystical concept of food. Says the Rebbe, it's Kamesh Kosov, the Apostle says, Ich l'ureyim, eat friends. Shsu v'shikru doidim, drink and get drunk. Doidim, also means friends. And according to Kabbalah, Reyim goes on Chach Mobina. Right, Samach to Samach Reyim, Ahu v'im t'ein d'ein d'lom is Pasha, it's Chach Mobina. And Doidim, of course, we know from Anila, Doidim, Doidim, Lee, this goes on Zayn Malchus, Vov Kev Shem Avayim. Says the Rebbe, Ich l'ureyim l'eilah, it says in Zayi, Kabbalah. That eating of the friends is the higher level. Chachmabina are friends. And when they eat, they rejoice. When they eat, they're brought together and so forth and so on. Shsu, v'shikru, drink and get drunk. Deidim also means friends. Latato. Says the Reb, v'shikru, and nukva. There's the two aspects, the masculine and feminine aspects. The Eiramban and nukva. On the lower Madrega, Shemachinas Amides, which goes on the seven emotional attributes, which include Chesed, which is kindness, and Gvudu, which is exactitude, and Rachman, which is compassion and mercy. The Hainu, in other words, if you want to have friendship, Shemachinas Chachmo Bina, that there should be the attributes of Chachmo Bina, and they should be joined, Sarachlias Bachinas Achila, it's through food. In order to have the emotions, that the emotions should be energized, should be unified. So you have to have drink, food, and drink create a certain mood. And in this instance, food and drink create reim uh, and daidim. So there's two aspects: the food and the drink actually create the reim and the daidim, the midas of atzilas, the svidas of atzilas. And once they exist, they bring life and joy to them. And he explains. When you're talking about HaKadosh Baruch Hu, don't forget the reality. Nothing has any worth next to him. In other words, when you're talking about the Ebishter himself, you can't speak of kindness. You can't even speak of wisdom. Because that even Chochma exists only in relationship with Asiya. In other words, when you're talking about Hashem Himself, even Chochmah is Bechinas Asiya. It's the level of Asiya. V'nikra Adam da Asiya. V'chulu, even Chochmah is the concept of Asiya. K'maymer and Chachim v'chulu. There's a level where the Ebesh did is a Chochom, but there's a higher level where V'lav mikol ilin mides ihu klav. For Yachal, Hashem is above Amid. Hashem is ain't safe. Ain't safe means he's not lacking anything. But ain't safe means he doesn't have any detail. He has no form. And the phenomena of Amida, whether it's Chochmah or it's Chesed or it's Bina or Gevura, is an individuated attribute. In other words, Amida which is specific and manifest. And the Abishta by himself is beyond completely any kind of concept of specificity and manifestation. Key. Hamid, the same begin as Gula Mida, the Mid, the Sava Kadesh Baruch Hu, the translation of the word Mida means measure. And then the Rebbe says, why do you have to have measure for us? We need to be rewarded as Sadikim. And that the reward that we receive should be measured and tailored and therefore beneficial for us. The reward that we receive, we should be able to take. And it should reach us in the kind of a way that we can value and appreciate. 
Alternatively, even the concept of punishing Rishoyim requires Midas. Why? You think you're going to destroy a Russia? Go ahead and destroy him. Why do you have to have a measure? And the Tedet says, Shem ho yurach If there would be a level of compassion which is called Poshut. In other words, Belik Vulamida, where there's no limitation, there's no measure, there's no division. Hashem would have compassion in the Russia as well, because there's no distinction, there's no differences. And therefore, the Rebbe says, in Ein Sof, there's no limitation. But when you come into Atzilos, there is limitation. And the meaning of the Pasuk, Ich Lureim, Shesu V'Shikru Doidim, this facilitates the creation of Atzilos and the bringing of order and life into the aspects of Atzilos. And again, as this Maimed is going to eventually get to, the joy that comes from all of that. V'ni Etzli is Barach Shu Ein Sof. In as much as Hashem himself is concerned, he's Ein Safe. Nothing is any worth relativism next to him. So, in order to bring forward from the Pshitos of Ein Seif, there should be individual attributes of Chochman, Bina, Midas, and Malchus. That's going to be a phenomenon called food. The flow has to descend from heaven to earth that nourishes in a measured way. That Chochme nourishes from the eighth of the Mazolas. Which is eating and nursing Aidea Mazolas through the constellations of Chulu. That's the meaning that on the higher level, the Reim, the friends, eat. And he continues, In order for there to be the friends on the level of the Midas, you have to drink. The concept of drinking, even more than eating, represents bringing the f- flow of life. Lower, like there should be emotions and measure. Like for example, a person eats, it creates blood. And a person drinks and the blood is f- distributed all over the body. The Gemara says, A person eats and doesn't drink, his food is blood, and they are associated with the covet, with the liver. That according to the the liver is damn color. The liver is one big piece of blood. Only when you drink does it dilute the blood and cause it to be distributed all over the body. Kimayim yerdim v'chol, the waters cause it to descend. V'zeo shtu v'geim v'shikru, hu b'chinnus es galos, revealing chayas to a lower madre, yenichnes yain v'chulu, the wine enters in and it brings joy. Now, if you look at the words of the Rebbe, the Rebbe is saying that the eating and drinking creates the Midas. And of course, however we understand how eating and mead, drinking creates Midas, it clearly means that Simpson, that the concept of food and the concept of drink is a diminution of what ain't safe on the level of ain't areich is to create Midas. And once the Midas exists, you nourish the Midas again with food and drink. In other words, just like a body would God forbid pass away, would expire, would die, if you don't nourish it. Similarly, once Atzilus exists, although the very creation of Atzilus was because of the food and the drink, now that it exists, it needs to continuously be nourished through food and drink. And of course, when you're nourished, you feel good. And when you feel good, you're joyous. Says the Rebbe in his body, in That's the concept of food. That's the concept of drink. And more importantly, that's the relationship between joy and food and drink. That's why Yom Tev, according to Rabbi Yeshua, it's Chetzi Lachem, according to Rabbi Yezid, it's possible it should be Kule Lachem, and on Shavuos, Hakel Meidim, the Be'inu Nami Lachem, everybody else you have to eat and drink, because you have to have joy on Yom Tev, and you're not going to have joy unless you eat and drink, because it physically nourishes the body, and that's where the joy comes in. What about Shri Yishal Pesach? Shri Yishal Pesach is higher than eating and drinking. That's the point. Shri Yishal Pesach is higher than eating and drinking. Why? Why? Why is it higher than eating and drinking? Push it. It's like Elam Haba. What do we say about Elam Haba? You're going to have a goof. And you're not going to eat and drink. Shri Yishal Pesach has the same concept. Let's find out why. 
Line 76, Pesach. Now we're in a position to explain the Indian of Shriya Shal Pesach. Kini Yomar Azal Binyin Kriyas Yamsov, the Rebbe analyzes. Shriya Shal Pesach, of course, is associated with the splitting of the Yamsov, of the sea. So the Chazal tell us, Ra'as HaShiv Chala Yom V'chuli, what a maidservant saw to see, the greatest prophets did not see. And of course, we're all familiar with the famous quotations that hey, Mikiru Tchila, the little infants that were conceived and born in Mitzrayim. And they were left in the field and swallowed up by the earth. And when they were grown up, and they would grow out of the ground like grass. And they would come home at the Yamsof. They pointed and they said, They recognized the Eibishter who had given them milk and honey when they were eating from the rocks under the ground. So they saw incredible Gili Alakos. Says, Where do you get the impression of the Chumish? That was such a great revelation of godliness. And I have to tell you, you learn Chesidus, and you're so used to talking about Kriyas Yamsov. And here the Rebbe stops you in your tracks and says, excuse me, what does Kriyas Yamsov have to do with Gil Yalakos? You know, you see Mitzrayim, it says, Nigla Leia Melech Macham Lacham Lachadosh Baruch Hu Golam. By Chatzay Salayla, by Makas Becheres, Vavarti, Beret Psaim, Vedat Nvei Kesi. But where does it say in the Tera that when the Ebishter split the sea, there was a great revelation? It only says he split the sea. Now, if you're familiar with the Hasidus, there's four great events. Midnight of Makas Bechedes. Midday, Be'etzam HaYem is there when the Exodus took place. Early in the morning when the Yamsuf was split. And early in the morning when the Ebishter came down on the mountain and gave us the Tera. Those are four sequential events that are not about miracles, like the Dam and the Tzvadeh and the Kinim. They're about unifying heaven and earth, bringing godliness into the world as a precursor, as an initiator for the concept of Dira Betachtainim, which the Jewish people are going to achieve over the course of their entire history. So as the Rebbe, of these four events, the one that the Teda does not explicitly refer to the revelation is clear. Where do you have a Kriyas Yamsav Gili Elikos? The Pshas Matan Teda Ksiv Ponim Beponim. When the Abisha gave us a Tater, it says explicitly in the Tater, face to face. Ponim be ponim means a face in a face. And that ponim el ponim a face to a face. Di ben ve gamer Hashem spoke. And the same is true by Yichat says Laila, by Makas Bechedes, and by Yichat says Ayyem, by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Avalkan hechen lom duzer. Where did the Chachamim extract that just like those other three occasions, the Tater explicitly associates them with Gilead of course, and the same is true also by Kriyas Yamsa. And the Rebbe gives a very mystical answer. Achayin, the way we know that Kriyas Yamsuf was a great revelation just as was Makas Bechedes and Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim and Matan Teda is because it says in the Teda, Diksiv Matitzak Eli. Stop screaming. Call it, keep quiet. Shvai. Right? And you know the story. Matitzak Eli. Daber Yisrael Bnei So it says in Zayar, Stop davening. Stop screaming. There's no need even for tefillah. This is Atik, the Ebishter himself. For Gam, Ksiv, additionally, it's written in the same sequence. And Hashem, Yilachem Lachem Hashem is going to fight on your behalf. For Atam Tacharishon, the event, the requirement of the Yidin, Bahar Sinai was to keep, by, by, by Kriyas Yamsa was to keep quiet. He needed to, and he explains, Shadiba, they begin his Chach. Speech is with the mouth. Which is Kabbalistically Malchus, but it begins with Chokhmah. When the of the Pasuk says, "Bechokhmah Yosed Eretz," Chokhmah founds the earth, and earth means Dibur. So it says in Chazal and Zayar, "Abba from Chokhmah Yosed Brata, you found Brata, the daughter, which is speech." Kiduah Mimashal Atine. The example for this is a baby that he can be intelligent, but she ain't a yochel adar bechulah. He cannot speak because he doesn't have any Chokh. So speech, which is the lowest attribute, Malchus, begins with Chochmah, but not higher than Chochmah. Line 84. V'hin, Yamra Zal the Chazal tell us, Chochm eini medaber b'fnei mishe gadol mimenu. When a Chochm stands in somebody that's higher than Chochmah, like Syogla Chochmah, the fence which is around Chochmah, higher than Chochmah is what? Shikin. When Chochmah is in proximity to something higher than himself or herself, he's wise enough or she's wise enough to keep quiet. 
someone is in front of a great king. So you keep quiet. The reason for this is, I did the Torah Lemivla since you're in the process of absorption. Your entire you focus on what you can get from the king who is greater than you, who is mashpia on you, lay polit v'chuli, you don't give anything out. It says the hey, look at Eben. Here's the point. Why did the Eben should tell Yidin to be silent? Because the event of Kriyas Yamsuf revealed a kind of giloy which elicits the silence. O Kriyas Yamsuf and the Eben should split the sea. Shenig lehem gile lekusa yisbarach. There was a revelation of God in his shalom. I lume bechinas chachma above chachma. Lachen siv. Therefore, the Torah tells us v'atam tacharish and you should be silent. Bechinas sika in a state of silence. So we're going backwards. We say the command of Hakadosh Baruch Hu for silence proves that the revelation that was going to take place then would elicit silence. And like I said before, the Zayar says. Atik Atalia Milsa, this has to do with Atik, when Atmos of Alakus, namely Atik, is revealed, you're silent. And the Rebbe says, Well, the Chain Trilish Mene Esre just throws in this one line in Avoida. That's the Pshat on Yid, Davidish Mene Esre Gamkin. Because you may ain't a say Gili behind his bit of a Cholish Mene Esre, you're standing in front of the Melech. And when you stand in front of the king, you go silent, therefore, the Allah is a Mashmiyim Kel. Your voice is unheard, Vachuli. Kumta Chay said that. Shvi Shal Pesach, which is Kriyas Yamsuf, is different than all the other Yom Tevim. That it has to do with silence. Why? Because it's higher than Chochmah. Vezehu, and that's the source of Hafach Yom Liyabosh. How did the Abish to transform the sea into the dry land? Or the dry land into the sea, as it were. But in this moment, the focus seems to be on Hafach Yom Liyabosh, that the sea, which is the higher level became the dry land and so forth because there was a revelation which is higher than Chochmah. Look at the next words. Sham Nismechabe. And because Havach Yom Le'abosh was an incredible Simcha. And as you'll see later on, this Simcha is not a Simcha from Machil Oshtiyah, it's a Simcha from Shisik. Now the Rebbe's question is, the Havach Yom, the sea was split. Why does he say transforming Yom Le'abosh? And he explains. The sea is the idea of a mashpia. Because the sea has water. And to have life, you have to have moisture. And the moisture of the sea makes it to every corner of the earth to irrigate it and to make it alive. The land, which is by itself dry, receives moisture from the sea in order to be fertile. As the sea provides moisture. To all of the earth, hits and that's the basis for sprouting and growth and life. And it brings the pasuk Of course, we have mountains, and you have snow or you have clouds, and the water collects, and then when it melts, it cascades down into the valley and it collects in rivers and little streams. The streams become rivers, the rivers become large rivers, they become raging rivers, and they all end up in the same place in the ocean. But it doesn't end up in the ocean and stay in the ocean. It's an aquifer. It's a cycle of water that somehow makes it back up into the hills and down into the streams and down into the rivers and into the raging rivers and back into the sea. Because if all the waters went into the sea and stayed there, there'd be no water on the dry land. And it would all dry up. And that's what the Pasuk says. All streams flow into the rivers, which flow into the sea, Vayam, and then Amal, the sea is never full. You know why? Because al mokim shanacholim helchim sham, heim shav melechas. Just as the waters of the rivers go to the sea, the waters of the sea return to irrigate the land a second time. Lolechas bechazor al encholim, to re-irrigate the rivers and streams and so on. Because she'ilaf kain, if the water went only in one direction, from the rivers and streams to the sea, they would have long dried up and become Kharif. Uh, so we understand that however the Abishta pulls it off, the water is cyclical. And of course, the key contributor to this is clouds, that it receives its water from the clouds over the ocean. And then the wind carries it. And it irrigates the dry land, and it creates life. So the water represents mashpia. 
the land represents Makabal, and Hafach Yom Le'abosha is the transformation of Mashpia into Makabal, as you'll see later on in the Maimon. Says the Rebbe on line 96, Obehi Galeth Niglis Gili Gadl Kanal. When God Almighty makes a revelation that comes from a Madrege, which causes one to go silent, because it's a Gili of an itself which is higher than Atzilus, Nepach Yam Le'abosha, the Mashpia is transformed into a Makabal. Instead of being busy, speaking and announcing and giving, you go silent because you're in the presence of something above yourself, which is kesef. The calm ukmane, they stand like a nay, that means a barrel or a water skin. To be like a wall, bechin is even demon, like a silent stone, because in the presence of the Ein Sof, even the mashpia becomes a makabel. I did it tarad v'cholu kanal instead of being a mashpia, you makabel ma become a makabel, and that's the pshat v'aglidu mai. The water becomes a piece. It's nigla. It becomes congealed. It becomes hard, like ice. This, of course, is a concept in Teira and in Kabbalah that when water becomes into a salad is called rakia or it's called kerach. But the concept here is the water flows to give, and in the presence of the Ein Sof, it becomes a makabla, becomes quiet. And therefore, since by Har Sinai, we learn, by Kriyas Yamsov, pardon me, we learn that there was a gili of Atik, which produced, which elicited a silence. Therefore, it's true that every yid and every yidin, including a shivcha, saw Mashalei Roy Cheskel Gili Godel Kolkach, even in Cheskel Anavi, who was one of the greatest prophets, and he is the one who gave us a record of the divine chariot and so forth and so on. He, when he didn't see such great revelation, Ki Cheskel Roy, Cheskel saw, but he didn't see Pshitas. He didn't see Ein Sof in its plainness, but rather Ki Im Pnei Ariyev Gamer. He saw the face of a lion, the face of an eagle, the face of an ox, and the face of an Adam. In other words, Bechinus is Chalkos. He saw subdivision. In other words, you could see not higher than Adam, not higher than Atzilus. And he probably was lower than Atzilus also. As opposed when the Abish split the sea. Ho ye gili alakusa yez barach shalomayl, Bechinus is Chalkos. The godliness that was revealed at that moment was higher than some division. Ki Bechinus kerach. Everything becomes one piece, like ice. Agli domai, the words water hardens because they're bottled to their higher mashpia. So instead of being a mashpia, they become bottled as a makabel. Now they stand like a water skin, as we discussed in the previous paragraph. was the post-success that above the heads of the malachim, there's an expanse, there's a stretched out uh, continuum which is kerach, like ice. And the Rebbe says, Kerach has Bechinus Cherek. Now, I don't know what Kerach Bechinus Cherek meant. I looked in the Mara Makemis, and he's referring to Hosea. Tikkun Hosea, Tikkun Yutes, Daflam Ates, I actually looked it up inside. And uh, it's difficult for me to know what is the meaning of the word Kerach. You have Cheker, and you have Kerach, and you have Cherek. I'm not sure exactly what the differences are. I, I suppose that it has to do with the, with the Nikud of Chiruk. You have Shuruk, and you have Chirik, and you have Kometz, and you have Chaylum. Chirik may have an allusion to the Yin from Chirik, but I'm not certain. I don't know. Says the Rebbe in line 102, Vizehu. Now that we understand that Bakriyas Yamsuf, the revelation comes from such a place. When the Mashpiyim go silent, that's the Pshat in the post. There was a cloud and there was darkness, and he shone. And he holds that Vayar goes not on the Onan, but on the Cheshach. That what word is masculine, that is shining, it's the darkness itself. The darkness itself was shining, not that the light was shining in the darkness, but the darkness itself was shining, which doesn't make any sense. Light shines and not darkness shines. So he continues on line 104. When the Abish created the world, he divided the Lakim Bene Ed gave me that light should shine and darkness shouldn't shine. Bechin is parsem mafsik, is curtain to separate. The Bechdeli is Ishtash also elements vice chalkas of Cholon order for the chain reaction of worlds. And the subdivision of worlds, you have to have screens. And these screens say light shines and darkness conceals, so there should be levels. Only on the first day of creation, that you have life and darkness together. In which case, there was no Seder Ishtashalos and darkness itself could shine. But the Bechdei Elias Ishtashalos Vachulu Hivdil Vachulu, if there's going to be a world and a chain reaction of worlds and a series of levels, you have to separate. 
Sagt der Heile Kerebe, und beschaß Kriyas Yamsef. Und der Ebisch ist split the sea, Heyer Bechines Cheshachanal, the darkness itself shown, which is reminiscent of Yemarish. Shu Bechines Yoshes Cheshach says, say the truth is that in darkness you have even a greater light than you have light in itself. Shalamaylam Bechines Haishtal Shalom. And at Kriyas Yamsef, that's where the light came from. So now that Rebbe says something radical, and you have interesting, Alter Rebbe makes a statement, and on the statement that Samach Tzedek writes, Tzorachian, V'lachein lo hikrivu shalmei simcha b'shviya shal Pesach. They didn't bring a carbon of simcha and shviya shal Pesach. Writes that Samach Tzedek Tzorachian, I don't understand it, that's not true, halacha they did. But Alter Rebbe in this Maimir, like I told you before, is treating shviya shal Pesach like Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur you don't fast, you just don't eat, why not? Because food has to do with bringing together in a neshama and a guf. And when you're revealing the alakus of the guf, which is higher than the alakus of the neshama, you're nourished by not eating. And the implication of this maimir is shviyah shal pesach is such a madreg. Shabachines hasimcha shal shviyah shal pesach. Those four words are misplaced. The joy of shviyah shal pesach. God will chalkach is so great. She'ein echel yechel lovey. The bechines his galos. It cannot be revealed. The bechines primis in an internal way. Shu bechines achila, which would be the concept of eating. Kim bechines makaf aleim amayla. It's transcendent. So there is a simcha on shvi yishal pesach, but it's dafke not through food, because food shows on our cover. Food shows on simtzu. One thing has to nourish another. The body needs to be sustained through food and drink. And because of the nourishment, there is joy. Shri Shal Pesach, you're drawing nourishment from the joy itself. For the Chayn Tziv Sham Nismacha. Shri Shal Pesach is a day of Simcha. Sham Dafka, over there Dafka. Now if you're familiar with Chassidus, you know that Sham is usually associated with Klippa. Like Uvi Kashtami Sham. And over here, Sham is associated with Helen, which is higher than Gilead. Concludes the Rebbe with, with the idea that he started way back in the beginning of Sif Beis in line 52. This is the Pshat in the Gemara according to the Ramban. And we hold like the Ramban. Elam Haba has no eating. In the world to come as well, there's going to be such a revelation of godliness. Says the Rebbe, the goof is going to have its own life. And it's not going to need to get life from the neshama. There's going to be no need for food. We're not going to eat. Primiyas kim bechinas makav kanal. The garden is going to be from a state of sevev directly. Kum tochoyset. The tshvi shal pesach is nemadrege veilam abo. The justek in elam abo. There's no eating. So tshvi shal pesach. There's no eating because it's a gili of hide and say the rishdashlos vezehu. And now the rabbi finishes the maimer. He says. Shvi Shal Pesach reveals a godliness, which is the Meshpia becomes bottle. Yeah, you're higher than Meshpia Makabal. You're drawing Chais directly from the Makif, and therefore there's no eating and drinking. What happened in Shvi Shal Pesach? The Yam became Yabasha, the, the sea became dry, land. What's the problem? The Meshpia is the sea. The dry land is the Makabal. So you're saying. The sea, the mashpia, could no longer be a mashpia because he stood in the presence of the king. So you should say, Hafach yom lemelech. Hafach yom lekeser. Hafach yom lakadish baruchu. What's the explanation of Hafach yom liyabosha? Yabosha is makabal from yam. So madach, the mashpia becomes bottle in the presence of the ebishter. Allah has come and become the makabal. So he gives you an interesting tenet. Vezeu b'nei yitoch v'yabosha b'secha yom. The idea at the sea, because it's in the presence of the Eibishter, so Aidi the Torah lemivalei pola, the sea becomes bottled to its mashpia. But we compare that to Yabasha, needs to be explained, and he explains it in the following way. The Gemara brings two opinions, actually three opinions. One opinion is the heaven was created the earth. This is Beis and Beshamay and Abshimin. The second opinion is that the earth was created first, and the third opinion is that they created together, and each one brings a pasuk. And ve'elu ve'el divrei lekim chaim. They're both the words of the living God. That she be ma'ase shamayim kadmu. In reality, the heaven came first. Ube machshava kaduma eretz kadma. And the Eibush just thought the earth came first. Hafach yom liyabosha as liyabosha is in its shadish. That's the tenets. Or b'shas kriyas yamsef when the sea split. 
Shinas Gala Bahis Mahshavi Law, the supernal thought, which is higher than Chachma and higher than speech and higher than eating and drinking, was revealed. And Shasham Eretz Kadma, the earth in its source, is higher. So when you reveal the source, which is Mavatal the Mashpia, Aidi the Torah, the Miflat, the Mivla, the Polit, you say it became like the Yabasha, the Chayin Siv Holcho, by Yabasha, but the Hayam, the Yam became like a Yabasha. Says the Rabbi, behind the Bechinus Yabasha, she called Malashamayim. The Yabasha which came before the heavens cannot be said before. Very Gishmak, it wasn't hard. But then a Kud is Meirendik. The Rebbe raises up Shvi Shal Pesach on a pedestal like no other Yom Tov. Mamish ignored it, compares it to Yom Kippur. And in Mr. Shem next week, we're going to learn the next Cheshit Yom, which is even shorter. It's basically the same Nekude. It's much shorter. It's basically the same Nekude, um, but it uses different ices, different forms.